Today we're installing a high voltage battery hybrid solar power system. So that means it's super efficient and we can use it with the grid. So we'll have grid interactive capabilities. And it's by a company I have no idea about called Goodwe. So we're gonna see if they're any good. And this system will replace the EG4 system with the FlexBoss and the GridBoss MID. And this system has backfed seven megawatt hours and I've had no issues with it. Some people though, when you install these outside, they're complaining that it's overheating. And they were supposed to have an app update with a really nice interface and they talk about it over and over again, but it's been six months and I'm tired of waiting. So we're gonna rip this thing down. I don't like these stranded cables. They need to have a terminal. Whew. This is a high voltage battery, so the cables are pretty small. So we can put the battery wherever we want and then route the cables over to the inverter. see if there's voltage. Okay, zero volts, we can actually work in here. So I did some experiments and you can turn this thing on without communication attached. So if you flip the breaker and then you press this button, you'll get 260 volts DC, which is super dangerous. So make sure that the lights are off and the breaker is in the off position. And then before you connect anything to this battery, check for voltage. If there's no voltage, you can safely connect, but be very careful. This is high voltage DC and not a joke. This is scary stuff. Now we're gonna connect this later, so let's connect the inverter next. Wow, this is kind of nice. With high voltage battery, you don't have large terminals. Look how small this box is. When you're not putting two watt or four watt gauge cables from a 48 volt battery, you can make everything really small. We need to do DIY batteries with high voltage. That sounds very scary and dangerous, but that's where we're headed, honestly. Always make sure that it's seated all the way. This mounting screw is different than all the others. I spent 10 minutes trying to find it. So last night I connected all the boxes with flexible conduit. And from the inverter to the gateway or the MID, I use six gauge conductor because that's what it recommends right here. Now this box, the MID is designed to go between your meter and your load center. So you can back up an entire home. And you'll notice that these terminals are massive. This is where you connect your meter. And then over here, you connect your entire load center for your house. And then your inverter only connects with six gauge conductor. For this system, we have the meter connected to an RV 50 amp cable. So that's a six gauge conductor. So that's what I'm using right here. But this is designed to back up an entire home. So use the proper size cable, whatever is supplying your meter. And whatever's supplying your load center, connect it right here. Now these connections on the inverter require ferrules and these come with the inverter. Do not try to use your own ferrules. These are special and they're super long and they're designed to work with this terminal. Also, when you crimp these ferrules, you need to use a square crimper with four sides. That way it can actually fit inside of the hole. Do not try to use a six or an eight sided ferrule crimper because it will not work. Now, if you use the right tool, the right ferrule and the right gauge conductor, you will crimp it and then you shove it in the hole and then it will fit perfectly. If you don't do everything perfectly, it will not fit. I also added the solar array. So we have positive and negative and it goes over to a disconnect switch. Now for the last step, we're gonna add the battery. Thank you. 
Now we're gonna set up communication. This is a standard ethernet cable. And we're gonna use it to connect this inverter to the MID. So first at the MID. Now to connect the battery to this inverter, you need to use a standard ethernet cable and you're going to splice into it. And the blue and the blue and white wires are going to connect to this screw terminal that comes with the inverter. Also, you need a terminal resistor, and this comes with the battery. First, we're gonna plug this side into the battery, and the terminal resistor will go into COM2. And then for a single battery system, this ethernet cable will plug into COM1, and then cover them up. And now we're gonna plug this into CAN1. Now it should be good to go. Now that it's all connected, we can turn it on and establish communication. So first we turn on the grid, and we get some lights right here. Next, we turn on the loads. We don't have any loads yet. Next, we turn on the battery. So first, we're gonna flip the breaker, and then we turn on the solar. And now the app is connected. Let's test for voltage because I think it's on. And we've got 240 volts, and the app is connected. But it shows that the battery is disconnected. And I need an installer password, but I can't seem to find it in the instructions. And you'll notice that the state of charge on the battery does not match what's on the inverter. So these are not connected. There's voltage and it's on and it's running, but it's not connected. And I don't know why it wouldn't work. Everything's connected properly. So now everything is working. You have to connect it with the app and then go to settings and then go to quick settings and then put 111 is the password and then log in and then you can set it up and you have to tell it what kind of battery you're using. And this battery is called the LXFHUS. And after that set, everything works. It's charging right now with solar and we have power coming out of the inverter. And the app is pretty simple. It shows you how much solar is coming in, the state of charge of your battery, how much is going into the battery, how much you're consuming from the inverter, and how much is being backfed. Now it's time to actually test the system. So let's hook up a load. First off, this thing has an EV charger and this is an 11,000 watt inverter. So let's hook this up and max it out. So first I disconnected power. And now it's charging with 40 amps. And this load is pulling 10,500 watts. So we have 7.3 kilowatts coming from solar and three kilowatts coming from the batteries. And you'll notice that it is dead silent. I think this is the best feature of this inverter. Now for me, every time I make a video, I used to have to run over here and turn it off and disconnect the entire carport because the fans were so loud and it would screw up my whole video. But now I don't have to. So for this system, I'm not gonna replace this until I can find something that's silent like this because this is really nice and there's no way I'm going back. And it makes me wonder why the Flex Boss isn't like this. This is fantastic. But before I get too excited, let's actually run this for a few months and see what happens. Also, I'm gonna start checking the forums to see if anybody has any issues that I can report on with this. I'm gonna run a load center down here and then run the mini splits and a whole bunch of other stuff for a few months. Now it's time for the pros and the cons. First downside is the proprietary batteries. If something goes wrong, you have to go through this company. And if you want to expand your system, you can only buy these batteries. Technically, I turned on the inverter without communication, so you could make a high voltage battery work with this inverter, but if you want communication and all the features to work, you're gonna to have to use their batteries. But in the near future, we should make our own high voltage battery and see if it will work, because that's where things are headed. And these things are expensive. And some people are selling this battery for a lot more than other stores, so be sure to shop around if you do want this thing. And the company that sent me this system is called Best Solar Bundle. And the price isn't that bad if you compare it to an EP Cube or a Tesla Powerwall. And this system is very small. Okay, I'm used to like 60 kilowatt hours, this is only 10. And look at these prices. I can get a 16 kilowatt hour battery for less than $2,000 right now. So this is not for everyone. This is more like the EP Cube crowd. 
But yeah, the battery is the limiting factor here for most people and it's proprietary. So if we can think of a way to use other batteries, we would be set because I like the inverter. Next, I did not like the setup. Why is there an ethernet cable that I have to splice? It should use a standard ethernet that you plug in and that's it. Next, when I was stacking the batteries, the plug that connects them together, there's a waterproof gasket and it actually arrived damaged. All the other batteries were perfect, but one of them was all shriveled up. So I had to remove that one. So that means that stack of batteries is not waterproof. Next, you need to make these ferrules perfect with the right size conductor, unless it will not fit. So you have to read the instructions and the instructions are not that great. They managed to fit everything on single sheets of paper all of it, the mounting, the commissioning, everything. And most of the instructions are fine, but when you get to the commissioning part, it just tells you to download the app. It doesn't tell you the installer password, what you need to set up or where to go. There needs to be a quick start in the app to tell you what to do. Also, they could add a couple more pictures up here. This is a little confusing with the terminal resistor. And I think that's all the complaints I have. It was actually very easy to install because the, the conductor size is so small. Now let's talk about the pros. So first it's dead silent. It's running right now at like maximum output and you can't hear anything. It's so nice. Previously, I'd have to shut down my system just to make these videos. So for me, this is fantastic. I can actually have this thing indoors. Next, because it has a high voltage battery, the efficiency is higher than other systems. When you take 48 volts and you charge it with a 500 volt array, and then you try to push it back into the grid that's 240 volts AC, there's gonna be losses. And most of them are 80 to 95% efficient. But this one's like 97% efficient. And this is what most of the industry is going towards is high voltage battery and these high efficiency figures. So it's gonna be pretty commonplace soon. Next, did I say it's quiet? It is so quiet. It's, it's crazy. It's changed the mood of my shop. Usually I walk in and I just have these fans just blasting me with noise but now there's no sound. It's crazy, which spoils me rotten because I'm not gonna put any other inverter in here until something's better than this. Now I'm gonna run this thing for a few months and report back on any issues that I have. I think the biggest issue with this system is the fact that you can't use your own batteries. If you could use your own batteries and have this powerful of a hybrid inverter that's dead silent, people would go crazy for it. What we need is a DIY battery that has communication protocol that works with this that's cheap, like a Yijing, where you get 16 kilowatt hours for $2,000. If we can get that with this type of inverter, I think every single person on the planet would want one. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked the install and I will see you in the next video. Bye.